the simplest definition that I have for a swap, for people who don't really care to try and understand it any more than that, is it is a bet on the price of oil. Futures are key elements. They're regulated, they go through an exchange, they're standardized. Now, what does it mean that they're regulated and through an exchange? It means that when you do a, a futures contract, a futures deal, the counterparty is the exchange itself. So if I buy one lot of Brent futures, maybe at the same time VTOL sold one lot. Do I know that it was VTOL? No. No, I have no idea, and I don't even care. My counterparty is ICE, the Intercontinental Exchange. If we're talking about Brent, it's a bad example because there's no physical delivery under Brent. But if, let's go to WTI, West Texas Interme Intermediate. NYMEX, actually they were bought by the CME. Anyway, NYMEX Light Sweet Crude Futures. If I buy one lot of, I'll take January 2019, WTI futures, that's 1,000 barrels. So I buy one lot of it and hold on to it. If I just hold on to it, what's going to happen? Well, I have a price risk, but let's ignore that. Can I hold on to that forever? No. No, it's for when is the delivery of the January 2019 futures contract for WTI? In January 2019. It's in January, because that's a January future, so it means the delivery is in January. Sooner or later, and probably somewhere around the middle of the month of December, I'm going to get a phone call. Who's going to call me up? Ice. Well, in this case, it would be NYMEX or, or the CME and say, uh, Chris, you bought one lot of WTI. Uh, yes, I did. Well, the contract has stopped trading. It's expired. There is no more trading of, of January futures. Oh, what does that mean? You are now the proud owner of 1,000 barrels of WTI in Cushing, Oklahoma. Can you please tell us where you want it to go? Huh. I don't have a tank, uh, what should I do? Okay, if you screw up like that, the exchange will try and find someone who screwed up the other way. They'll find someone who sold and doesn't have the oil and they'll, they'll mix you together and cancel it out. But technically, I will be receiving oil, WTI, in January, physically, in Oklahoma. Who's delivering this carpet? Someone on the other side who sold one contract. The exchange will match us together. I'll get the oil, he will deliver the oil. There's no physical delivery under the Brent contract because nobody was willing to take the responsibility of organizing and make sure it worked. Everyone hoped that Shell would do it and Shell said, I'm not interested, thank you very much. So Brent looks like there should be physical delivery. It expires prior to the month. Why do we expire, the, for example, WTI? Why does the January WTI contract expire in the middle of December? Because we, have to, we need time to organize the delivery. Could you have the, con the January futures contract expire on the last day of January? How are you going to support the car? When are you going to get the oil in that case? By the time you sort everybody out and match them together. When will the oil be physically delivered? <coughs> February. Therefore, it would be a February futures contract. So the nominal month is the delivery month. So that's what a futures contract is. Futures are very convenient because they tend to be small quantities. A thousand barrels is very small, so it's easy to deal with. All right, what's a swap? I said earlier it's a bet. Um, I'll come back to that. First of all, a swap is what we call OTC. Does anyone know what OTC Over means? Counter. Over the counter, so it's unregulated. We can do a swap with each other. And we can do any sort of swap we want. We could write it in Swahili. We could carve it into pieces of rock. Doesn't matter. We could have it under Chinese law. Fine. We can do whatever we want. Is that very convenient to do it that way? Probably not so much. If you're trading a futures contract, it's perfectly standardized. Every single futures contract for December, for June, for whatever, is identical. The only thing that changes is the price. But an OTC swap, because it's over the counter, we can do whatever we want with it. All right. Most of the time people don't do that because if you buy a swap and then want to resell that swap, if you have the contract written in Swahili and now you have to sell a swap to somebody else written in Chinese, what happens if something goes wrong? You might have price risk or legal risk or something, so we tend to keep the same language, but they're not regulated. Okay, so that's what a swap is. Legally, there's no physical delivery under a swap, which is why I said it's sort of like a bet. So let's go back to this example we're talking about. We're talking about December, um, 
gas oil, future, December gas oil prices in Europe, Platt's cargo prices. You think they're going up, I think they're going down. The market has established a futures market, a forward market for these prices. So we can look at the market and say, okay, the market thinks it's $600 for December. What does that mean? That means that Platt's delivery prices for Platt's in December, the market is saying it's worth $600. You think it's going up, I think it's going down. So we're going to take a bet on that. So if it goes to 601, you make a dollar. If it goes to 599, I make a dollar based on the average of the month of December. Very typically, we use a monthly average. Well, do I pay you just $1? Is that very useful? How do we set the size of the bet? Well, how do we price gas oil in Europe? shekels per bushel, yuan per liter, dollars per ton. Okay, so Platts publishes $600 a ton, $601 a ton. So if we make this bet, we need to establish the size of the bet. So let's do a bet for 5,000 tons, which is a standard size for a swap. So you think it's going up, so are you going to buy the swap or sell the swap? The price of the swap is $600. We established that's the starting buy. point of the bet. Buy. 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 You think it's going up? So you buy the fixed price. Mm -hmm. So are, now, are you now long or short? Long. Long. You want the price to go up. I sell the fixed price at $600. i am short. I want the price to go down. And the size of the bet is 5,000 tons. We get to the end of December. We look at all the Platts prices over the month, and it's $602. Who won? And how much do I have to pay him? He bought at $600. I sold at $600, the fixed price. So I was the, the swap seller. He was the swap buyer. The settlement price is $602. What was the size of the bet? $5,000. So I have to pay $10,000. So when you think of this as just a bet on where Platts will be publishing their prices, it's an easy way to conceive of, of swaps. It eliminates this whole thing about, wait a second, am I getting physical oil, not getting physical oil? It's just a bet on where prices are going. It's only paper. Paper. So why we call it a paper contract, a derivatives contract. Now, how is that useful? How does that help us? What are we worried about if we own a bunch of oil that we'll be selling in December? Suppose I have a cargo of oil that I'm selling in December using Platt's gas oil prices. What am I afraid of? That the price in December will be lower and the prices published by Platt's will be very low. So what will I do? Will I still sell that swap or will I buy the swap? Sell the swap. I'm long oil. I need to be short the swap, so I need to sell the swap. Once I sell the swap for December for the same amount as my cargo, a 5,000 ton cargo, 5,000 ton swap, am I now hedged or not hedged? Yes. I'm hedged. I took the opposite position. So my physical cargo I will sell using the Platts prices, Platts gas oil prices. I bought it at $600. The market drops to $500. Will I kill myself by throwing myself out the window or not? If you're not hedged. But I, I was hedged. No. So I lose $100 on my physical cargo. What about our hedge? I sold my hedge at $600, and I get to buy it back at $500. So I make $100 here. I lose $100 there, and I've locked in that $600 price. Same as the earlier example. Whatever price we agree to the hedge, to the swap, that's where I lock in my price. Okay, so that's what a swap is. Again, don't be confused that simply because a swap isn't called a futures, that the price of a swap is a prediction any more than the futures price is a prediction. It's not. Both are the price today for delivery in the future. On a futures market, there's actually physical delivery for the most part. The swaps market, it's a financial settlement, but it represents what? Platt's prices. And what do Platt's prices represent? Physical cargos, which are real deliveries.